Good evening, Miss Sophie. Oh, it's you. What do you want? I've recently discovered something that may not shock you at all. Your criminal record. The hell are you talking about? Is it about that time a fog accidentally shot himself back in 2017 and now I got framed for it? Oh no, there's more than that. He did some shady business from the looks of things. Actually, as recently as 2020. That was when I was a vampire, and you just discovered that? Embarrassingly, yes. But there's something more interesting than that. Have you heard of a notorious criminal named Sophia Pavlova? Nope. <laughs> Maybe these pictures will cough up something. A vigilante who was charged for stealing many bags of blood, which were stolen from other criminals, as well as assaulting seven victims, all of which are criminals too. Lucky they're alive. I love to hear the suffering from them. That can't be me. I had my hair dyed red. It couldn't be your clone sister Paula either. She has her own criminal record and she is obsessed with you as much as me. But Sophia, though, Sophia is special. She is known for her sadistic and masochist tendencies, threatens to harm any assailant with her cold tone, and has a voice not similar to yours. The only difference is that she has a Russian accent, or rather, a fake Russian accent you hear in Hollywood films. It doesn't sound very convincing. But this is hinting to me that you have a double life. I swear that it's not me! She could be... I don't know, another clone sister I never even heard of. Could be that perfect clone Paula's been talking about. God, I need to check on that crap. I don't believe you. You're just fluffing with me. But if it turns out to be true, then maybe I'll help you out. Maybe you'll join us to stop her. After all, we're always hiring. But I doubt you're actually innocent. Until then, Sophie. Or... Sophia. Leave me alone! Apologies for her intervention. It's just that she got more obsessed with you since checking your presumed criminal record. That is not me. Why would I do such devilish acts anyway? Are you saying it's because I still have Mandy in me? No! Actually, yes. I won't bother you with more incriminating questions for now. So, what are you gonna cover for your silly yearly series retrospective this time? Please be Quantic Dream Games. What? No, I ain't doing that. I don't want to feel creeped out about playing those excuses of adventure games of my own volition. Oh, volition. Is it Saints Row? Heh, <laughs> no way. I don't want to suffer from burnout when reviewing GTA clones. It's burnout, right? <laughs> It goes without saying, but I really miss the 20th anniversary of Shiny Red Car. I thought it started in 2002! The franchise is very much known for crazy automotive destruction will finally be this year's game retrospective, where I'm gonna cover the mainline entries many people know and love dearly. So yeah, that excludes Legends, Dominator, and Crash even. But I'll say this about Crash, just because it's the worst doesn't mean it's complete doo-doo. I mean, check out Great 2019, at least it's better than GT3. But I digress. What better way to talk about Burnout than to start at... The third game. Okay, I'll do the first one. This is gonna be a double feature though, because I want a head start. Criterion Software, unrelated to the Criterion Collection, was funded in late 1993 by the European division of the Canon Corporation, you know, the printer and camera company. Said corporation wanted to dabble on the multimedia stuff, which is great, since the founder of Criterion, David Lauke, has been working on 2D and 3D image processing techniques. And that's how the Renderware engine was created. With such potential for games, so much so that they created a demo about it, a gaming division was created in 1996 with their first game other than being scored Earth, some sci-fi flying game. A decent showcase for sure, but they've improved the engine as well as their gaming development as showcased by their cult classics like Trickstyle and Airblade. 
Render Rail was basically the Unreal Engine of the early 2000s. Now sure, Unreal existed back then, but it was not as ridiculously popular as it is today. No, Render Rail was the choice for a game engine, especially on consoles. Rockstar used it for the GTA games prior to 4, the PS2 era Tony Hawk games also run on it, Battle for Bikini Bottom does so too, hell, even Mortal Kombat and Persona got on the act too. But like all popular engines, it tends to have some shovelware. But this is a burnout video, so we must talk about burnout. Released in 2001 for the PS2 first, then on competing systems the next year. I can't find much information about its development on it that it took two years to make, and it was gonna be called Dropping Here at some point. Shitty title anyway. This is Burnout, the simple ass game where you drive generic looking cars and hopefully not crash. There are single race, championship, time attack, and some that are unlocked. Let's start our journey with the uh, Journeyman Grand Prix. For presentation, it looks rather lifeless. The graphics in the HUD looks like a fake game you'd see in a TV show. Not that I hate it or anything, it's rather too clean for me. The sound effects are lacking as well. The crash noises are great, but the engine sounds are lackluster, as well as a lack of feedback for stunts and turbo. Other than the music quieting down and hearing a heartbeat when it boosts. Speaking of music, I don't actually like the soundtrack, not because I think it's shit, I actually like it with Harbor Town's song being my favorite, but because it doesn't sound burnout to me. It's all techno and not as exciting, even if it goes ape shit intense after 4 or 8 crashes. By ape shit intense, I meant just shit. Those are way worse than the normal ones. They sound generic and not very intense. It makes Rise of Legs soundtrack blush. But here's something that's way worse. For some reason, starting from lap 2, the music tends to restart whenever you press a checkpoint. And it really, really sucks. All it does is disrupt the flow of the song. Thankful that most games don't do that. Imagine if Gran Turismo did that shit. It's annoying. As this is the GameCube port, you press A for gas and B for braking, like an old PS2 racer. I was really expecting the triggers to do the job, and after playing Nightfair, I kept getting them mixed. The controls work well, and the handling is good as well. You can drift by timing the brakes, which is really satisfying. It's so simple, even an actual monkey can do it, but I really like it. Why is everyone so up in arms about the mechanic anyway? The driving is cool and all, but in essence, Burnout is straight up an arcade racing game. What a twist though, it has traffic. Lots of traffic. <gasps> While annoying, it actually makes the races more intense, whether it be in highways, towns, and city centers. Now, even more recent Need for Speed titles there to do that. What's annoying though is that because of the abundance of traffic, you might crash at a car once in every race, and have to watch this cutscene of you doing the spinal after it. My shirts can cover that! No matter how bad you hit a car, even if it's really small, you still get a cutscene. Not always though, it's rather inconsistent for small ones. You also have boosts, which you charge by doing stunts like drifting, driving to oncoming traffic, near misses, but not jumps or doing takedowns. Yeah, it's rather off putting as someone more familiar with the later entries, but even if you can't do it, it's still great to see or hear an opponent crash into traffic, even freeing them to them. It's a shame it takes a while to fully charge it. Mmm! That is so satisfying. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. You can't use boost until it's fully charged, but after that, you can use it whenever you want until it's depleted. Though, you won't charge it while it's available to use it. Gosh, that's strict? Crush it to a cartex with a bit of it, and you have to recharge it to use it again. However, if you keep on using boost till it depletes all while doing stunts, you get a burnout which refills a portion of it to even full of it so that you can almost boost up forever. It's really ingenious if the track and the curse weren't a pain in the ass. In championship mode, you race a series of events, free race each, and they all have 3 laps each, no matter how long the track is, and that's a lot. Though calling it a championship is kind of a lie, you actually have to finish at a minimum position to progress to the next race, and you have to be first place in the last race, so a lot like Witch Racer 5. The tracks themselves are alright, they offer some challenging corners and loads of traffic. The interstate track is the easiest one, even with the city section. Speaking of, Gridlock is my favorite as it's just a quick track with square corners and alleyways. Driving through oncoming traffic never been so much fun, 
The other tracks are really difficult. Hillside Pass and its fans can fuck right off. This freeway section and the corners are a bitch when cars and trucks show up unannounced. In fact, Championship Mode gets so hard that it's really difficult to get first place, which is required in most races. So difficult that I feel like the game is fucking with me when it spawns trucks going through a junction. Fuck! I was doing an Iron Sheik impression, I swear. It's moments like these that make me go, how am I supposed to avoid that? Where here, there's a timer which goes up when you hit a checkpoint, as well as the eye beam rubber banding cunts. Just as if you're far enough from you, they still catch up, and it's as frightening and frustrating as driving through oncoming traffic. But the worst part is that there's limited restarts. You start with free credits, and if you restart a race, it costs one, and that's a fucking disgrace. It's fine when it's the first race, and it's at least better than no restarts, but considering how frantic the racing can get, it's only there to annoy and anger me. Thank God for Dolphin. But if you manage to finish the championship mode, the game gives you a 3D one, which is like racing, only without traffic. Now it looks like I'm playing a Gmon map. It feels liminal in a way. There's also face up which are required to unlock new cars, and survival, which is trying to do free laps without crashing. It's easier said than done. Burnout had a lot of potential, it's just that the presentation is like less or even compared to the previous work. And the difficulty gets quite harsh by the second series, but other than that, it can get fun. Not sure to recommend it though. Hey, I'm gonna leave for a few days. Photo shoot in New York. Are you sure? It's not one of those excuses for men to work with you? No, I'm being serious here. Alright, have fun there. See ya! Goodbye, love. Definitely an excuse. Hi, we're Acclaim UK. We're here not to just promote our new game, Burnout 2 Point of Impact, but we're also here to pay for your spitting tickets. If you got a fine for going over the limits, send us a photo of it, and we will pay it with no hassle whatsoever. What's that? The government doesn't like that? They want us to shut the promotion down? We're a bunch of twats, aren't we? Yeah, that actually happened back in 2002. Burnout 2, no relation, hit store shelves like the first game as a PS2 exclusive for a while until it got ported to the Xbox and GameCube in 2003. Hopefully the next games won't suffer the same fate as the PS2 GTA games for long. Ugh, why is skimming this company screen so slow? In the last game, we could just skip them right to the talent screen. Look at me, I'm already complaining! Now, what should I call my new profile? I already have one to test the game, and I don't want to name it Sophie again, so... There. Perfect. Right, let's start with... Licenses? Fuck! Offensive Driving 101 is just a tutorial where you get to know the mechanics of the game, despite knowing too well if you've played any of the other games. Not to worry as it's really short and it only has one category with 6 tests, and you get to actually play the game instead of watching an unskippable at first tutorial in the next game. I don't care, I hate it! Here's your training car after earning all gold in the lessons for your troubles. After that little detour, you can now do racy things like doing championships and face-offs, as well as crash mode. We'll get to that. As before, you drive generic looking cars around more varied tracks, all taking place in one map. First series, here we go! Now this is what I love. Presentation gets a major improvement, particularly in the audio department. While it looks a lot similar to the first game, such as the car still looking like they were rendering Scanline, it doesn't look nor sound solid this time, with an improved HUD and great audio feedback. Music is an improvement too, now we're rocking beats, and it's amazing. It even gets more intense when you use your boosts, and it's somehow composed by the same two dudes from the first game, now that's something. Handling is fairly similar to the previous game, it's still break the drift and it's difficult to go through corners by holding the boost button. At this point I am so used to the burnout mechanic that I just kept boosting till the bar is empty, even in a place where I shouldn't. And hey, you can do a perfect boost start by revving and burning your tires at the right time. It's quite fitting compared to say, need for speed most wanted, well all you have to do is stab the needle at the right spot to glow a different color, but it's still just as satisfying. Speaking of, boost is now overhauled, it charges faster and you hear the ready and the user it sounds that it's so glorious. However, you only use it when it's fully filled, otherwise you have to do stunts to get it back up. 
Bruno's are still here, which is great to see. Holy shit! Holy shit! Traffic is still a bitch, forwards and backwards. Not as harsh as last time, but there's still a lot of traffic to avoid, which is possible if really difficult. At least the crash scenes don't repeat themselves to make you feel as much shit as telling to press for a speed trap above a certain speed after failing that. Yet, thanks for telling me the obvious! I'll get to that game sometime later. The time is here, here, whatever. I'm more concerned about the AI cars, still as rubber bandits as ever. I'm still too scared to crash during series events. But it's not all doom and gloom, however. The tracks themselves, like I said, are more varied now set in a singular map with many environments, like the big south suburbs, the snowy crystal summit, and the repeating interchange 88. They're a lot more fun this time when many spots to boost tend to drift, and there's some narrow roads and sharp turns that challenge you, as well as the damn crossroads to better my existence. Much like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 and the connected circuits of the first game, which I forgot to mention, the point tracks composed of connected segments from the fiend tracks, and I can commend the effort. I really love the variety here. In Championship mode, you do the information series, which this time give you points depending on the position you finish in a track, rather than requiring to finish above a certain one. Winning all the races in a series are still required for face-offs though. No resource this time. Bleach. Pursuits are new here, where you destroy the target by crashing out at enough times before they escape. So nice of criteria to be progressive at the time, unless it's actually two people in there. And boy are they appears to get them. It's satisfying to actually destroy the target, though I don't see any potential here. In Championship mode, they're here to unlock new extravagant cars for races. There is also the occasional point race you have to do to unlock the next series, and after running all the required ones, you get a qualifier race to unlock the costume series. There, you race against and unlock souped up versions of the starter cars like the infamous green and blue coupe that shows up in almost every burnout game since. Oh hey, a wall speed reference! You still have your standard races and time attacks, but now there are new game modes like the Information Pursuit and Crash Mode, where you cause the biggest pile of you can in an area to accumulate money out of you or the city has to pay. Woo! Poverty damage! It takes quite some strategy to gain cash and multiply bonuses, and it's quite a dick in trying to get gold. Don't know if it unlocks anything after winning or earning gold in all of them, but it's still fun nonetheless. Oh, it actually does? Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Burnout 2 is a lot better than the first, as to be always expected. Just look at Conan's Destroyer. Joking aside, while it is difficult, it's also quite enjoyable with tons of great tracks and game modes to witness. Everything is just remarkable from the presentation to the gameplay, and it's safe to say that I highly recommend it. If only there was a remaster. This cannot wait any longer. Yellow? Paula? It's time. Oh, I've always wanted to hear those words. I'll be right with you, Sophie. Call me Sophia for now. I don't like where this is going. It's so lush with vegetation for a place very up north. This isn't right. Are we late? There could be two possibilities. Either Miranda caused a freak accident and everyone died inside, or... Don't scare me, please. The shootish. So... The notorious Sofia Pavlova. Tell me why y'all are here before I kill you both. Look, don't harm us. We were gonna infiltrate the base to destroy it until we learned that it's in this state for how many years? And who exactly are you, Lubov? Let me guess, Gerald of Rivia? Close. Gordon Reinhardt, professional gumshoe for the Brimstone Squad as well as Werewolf at Will. I'm Paula and I'm a stripper. You already know my name and crimes. And if you don't let us leave after this conversation, I'll have to break your ribs, suffocate you, and then kill myself. You're really cute when you're menacing. Is Xenia on top your film crush? <laughs> Guilty. Say, you're a detective. We can help you with your case, if you don't mind. How can we trust a criminal and some stranger who just arrived on the island and we don't know what they're gonna do here exactly? Well, I used to be creative here. Paula, what are you doing? I won't hurt you if you just tell me about it. <sighs> Fine. Spill the beans. I am a carbon copy of her, created since November 2018, as a failed clone. F 
failed clone? What do you mean by that? Well, Dr. Miranda Cox, the team captain of the project, wanted to create the perfect clone of an individual named Sophie Palmer, one with the demonic entity inside her. But to be more accurate, she wants to make a pale, demonous clone of her. Ever since she saw the ritual back in July 2018, all she ever wanted was to create the first living world demon. I thought it was all bullshit. All she kept pumping are fully human clones with no demon possessing them. We were deemed failed clones, and we were used as test subjects for some questionable experiments. Even before I skipped, I have known of the supernatural, but not those for the afterlife. Still, I managed to free two others, but the thought of it fluctuated even after escaping, kept thinking if demons are real, or Miranda just cuckoo crazy. It was not until I met Sophie's alter ego in February of next year that my suspicions are gradually going toward the former. I found out that someone else has teleconnect powers and later on, a girlfriend of Sophie revealed her succubus form. I have always wanted to stop Miranda from committing clone cruelty and stop the production. But after those life changing events, my determination to stop her plans grew. Same direction though, I don't know what even happened here. I really hope Miranda's master plan isn't fully realized. Pale demons make you paranoid, you know. Yeah, I've seen carpenters the thing more than enough times to know how they may end up. While they don't infect or assimilate, they do like to shapeshift not only into other people, but also animals, and even objects. They're the perfect infiltrators, in their fullest of forms. Reality is interesting, but it can also be scary. When do you say that? You're right next to the woman she mentioned. What in the hell were you doing, Gordon? Oh, I get it now. We finally met, Miss Pavlova. Although I'm sure we've already met years ago. I don't remember such meetings. And I swear, if you're gonna use that technology to create an army of clones for your evil corporation... This has nothing to do with taking over this facility. And no, we are not some evil corporation anymore. We've had a lot of restructuring ever since the split from Doppelganger Corporation. And come to think of it, I'm sure they're involved with this, too. But back to our subject. We were gonna destroy it entirely, but it seems Miranda thought ahead, and this little evidence is the reason why. This is a written transcript of one of Miranda's audio logs, dated March 24th, 2019. Read it for me, will ya? Since 2015, the invention of biological replica in January used to be my best work of all. My years of reaches, which led to the birth of the first clone chief codenamed 6 ls better known as Dolly, has led to the success of the first human clone, thanks to a kind individual as a test subject. I wonder who that is. Despite many hardships and government spending human cloning leading to work off the grid, the project proved to be a success. But now... It has been surpassed. After many attempts to create the perfect clone, who went to become my test subjects, I finally done it. I have surpassed even God's almighty creations. Many have dreaded what I've created, but for me, it's like seeing a newborn after nine months pregnant. On February 22nd, 2019, the first human-made pale demoness, codenamed Lucifer, created from samples of one Ines de Cruz, was born. After a month of checkups, my biggest project is team success. Finally, I can now die in peace, knowing that I've achieved pure greatness. I can't believe it. I'm almost three years too late. There's nothing we can do but to expect the inevitable. Don't be like that. We'll solve this problem however we can. Treacherous bitch. We used to be friends, at least more than just acquaintances. But after all that said and done, the science here was used in the wrong hands. I'm gonna end that cunt and her pet project if I saw them. Are you okay, Sophia? No. She must die. Only if you ditch your criminal past and join us. Never! 
I don't like the term enemy of my enemy is my friend. There's no way you're gonna- I'll join! You what? We gladly accept. If you can't beat us, join us. So that's how it is, Paula. I thought you're on my side for two years. But now that they just let you, a criminal worse than me, work for them, I'd rather work without you. In fact, I never even liked you. Even after we became so-called friends. Oh, it's so sad to see a friendship sinking down like Costa Concordia. Well, good luck on your personal vendetta, Sophia. But hear this. Doing it alone is suicide. You'll see, Mandy. And don't ever call me again, Paula. You started it. <laughs> Glad we meet again, Mandy. Me too. I'm sure Marie and Lily are alright with this. Here will take time. We'll change priorities to neutralize Lucifer. Sophie will have no worries about Lauren for a while. Even I hated spewing that lie to Lily back in Japan. Yeah. Turns out that's something our ex-CEO actually wanted to do. All the problems mostly stemmed from him. That's even better. Anyway, if I one day become a ninja after my training, I'd be glad to work with you, Gordon. Are you... coming on to me? Maybe. Yeah, I gotta talk to Lily about this. It may be polyamorous, but she still has qualms about a new partner. Oh yeah! I forgot you're having a second chance in life. By the HEF at that! I heard those resurrection office workers at Purgatory are really sadistic with their roulette games. But don't worry about me. It's been an honor to meet such a gifted member of this prestigious organization. I don't know how long this journey will take, but for now, take me back home. Please? With pleasure. Say, are you a fan of Hotline Miami with that outfit? Oh yeah, definitely. I prefer the first one. 